Father, what a wonderful day that uh, you have held the skies not to rain that we may learn of thee. And Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath that is drawing nigh. I thank you for my brethren all over the four corners of the world as we study. Lord, I pray that you may continue holding the reins, that uh, the sound and the videos may be clear for the glorification of thy name. And so, lay the glory of man in dust that Christ alone may have eminence in these presentations. And after all has been said and done, Lord, let us ask, what have we done with the grace that you have given unto us? Your name to be continued to be glorified. In Christ Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. And so, yesterday, we were looking at um, the issue of uh, the bride. That is what you were looking at, the issue of the bride. Uh, that is something that... Um, I looked at yesterday and uh, right now I want uh, to go to the the issue of um, what does it mean to be a seventh day Adventist this is something that uh, we need to ask ourselves what it entails to be a seventh day Adventist uh, brother Mbokeleng Hosa I don't know what especially I can do to make sure that uh, you get the volume right. Maybe you can increase the volume on your side. I'm trying my best where I am. The volumes are up, so you may just think of uh, increasing your volume uh, wherever you are. If it is too low, and uh, I know the Lord will bless us, uh, I'm considering that. But uh, I have done all the best on my side. And so I pray that the Lord will... Uh, magnify the volume so that uh, we may be able to listen to his word uh, without uh, problems. Uh, give me some feedback on what is happening there and then uh, I know the Lord will help us. And so yesterday we were looking at the issue of uh, the bride. Yesterday we were looking at the issue of the bride and uh, I want to pick it from there and just continue with the uh, the, the session of this minute, which is uh, uh, what is Seventh Day Adventism? This is the question that uh, everyone wants to get an answer, or uh, we may want to look uh, uh, into it as the basic thing of uh, the basic study of this time. And uh, I, I, I'll just uh, start uh, with a familiar familiar book that is Genesis chapter 2 Genesis chapter 2 this this is key to me when I'm looking at what is seventh day Adventism Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 2 I pray that you be with your Bible I pray that you be with your pen uh, I pray that you be with a place to write these things so that you may go and uh, relax and look at them in depth when you are alone. And so I'll start in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Then you should capture what actually we are being told that um, thus the heavens and the earth were finished this is in the perfect plan of god when he was creating the earth and the heavens the earth were finished in which day in the seventh day and then 
God had ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day. And so the whole purpose of seventh day Adventism it is brothers and sisters to finish the work. They have been separated from the world and from other churches not to do anything else but to finish up the work and then bring in an everlasting rest that the Lord is looking unto after the earth was created and the earth sin ended in Genesis chapter 3. Now the Lord has ordained a people who have actually to understand what it means to be a seventh day Adventist. It is not just going on church on the Sabbath but to finish up the work and then bring in everlasting rest. This is eternal rest. And so it can only be ended. Let us see, when we go back to Genesis chapter 1, and I'll take you a, a verses behind. Uh, verses 31, it says that, uh, uh, sorry, I hope uh, uh, the screen is all right. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were sixth day. And so, uh, by the time that uh, we have to finish doing everything, as God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. So, Adventists who have been called to finish up the work, when everything ends, everything has to be good. By the grace of God, we have to finish up the work that the Lord has given us unto us. And what kind of work is this? The work of character formation and bringing many into the fold. We have been saved so that we may finish up the work. And the work which we have, and what I want to tell you is that there is a greater work to do, but in a short time. That is the problem. And can we say that per se it's a problem? It's not a problem. It's just because we have been procrastinating the things that the Lord has uh, told us to do. That is why we see that um, actually the work is so surrounding. And the work that we have to fail to do in time of peace, then we will be forced to do under most forbidding circumstances. Seventh day Adventist. What does it mean to be a seventh day Adventist? Uh, I, I'll be going into a lot of spirit of prophecy quotations. And we are told, a congregation may be the poorest in the land, it may be without the attraction of any outward show. But if the members possess the principles of the character of Christ, they will have his joy in their souls. Angels will unite with them in their worship. The praise and thanksgiving from grateful hearts will ascend to God as sweet oblation. From the beginning, faithful souls, what I have just read, I have read from uh, Christ Object Lesson, page 298, paragraph 3. From the beginning, faithful souls have constituted the Seventh Day Adventist Church. I, I want you to get that clearly because there's a lot of controversy in these things. And uh, I don't know what I can do, Brother Hosa, uh, Brother Kenneth, John Kenneth, I don't know if you can assure me that the voice on your side, the volume on your side is okay. And uh, Brother Javan Moshe from Uganda, I don't know if the volume is okay on your side. Aaron Titus. Somebody to tell me if they are experiencing volume problem on their side so that uh, I may see what I can do. Welcome, Sister Carolyn Kimani. I want to know if the volume on your side is okay. I'm asking this question because there's a brother who can't get the volume right on their side. Sister Carolyn Kimani, if you are hearing me, is the volume okay on your side? You can just type the answer. And so, from the beginning, faithful souls have constituted the church on earth. In every age, the Lord has had his watchmen who have borne a faithful testimony to the generation in which they live. These sentinels gave the message of warning, and when they were called to lay off their armor, others took up the work. God brought these witnesses into covenant relation with himself, uniting the church on earth with the church in heaven. He has sent forth his angels to minister to his church and the gates of hell has not been able to prevail uh, has not been able to prevail against his 
people so this is the presentation what is seventh day adventism and uh, we are looking at uh, what it means to be a seventh day adventist and so uh, let us offer just a word of prayer and uh, we continue heavenly father we thank you once again may you make everything uh, okay for the glory of thy name lord work through these feeble instruments that uh, thy children may be benefited and uh, we may learn together thank you brothers and sisters and uh, uh, i praise the lord for everything uh, i hope uh, the sound technicalities have been dealt with and so the really burden of uh, the time right now is uh, to learn what it means to be a seventh day adventist thank you brother hosa uh, god bless you and continue praying for the equipment because we are working with feeble instruments made by hands of men but uh, we praise the lord because everything is okay right now and so be blessed as we go through this presentation and so uh, we are looking at uh, uh, the, the the question what is seventh day adventism and uh, i had uh, earlier stated that um, just um, as we had read genesis chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 and genesis 131 is that um, the main purpose of the seventh day adventist is to finish up the work uh, that the lord has given unto them we are not just like any other church we are just not like any other people going to the church and coming from it on sabbath but we are told that we are meant to finish the work and i was saying that a congregation may be the poorest in the land it may be without the attraction of any outward show but if the members possess the principles of the character of christ they will have his joy in their souls angels will unite with them in their worship the praise and thanksgiving from grateful hearts will ascend to god as a sweet oblation this is slide number two we are looking at from the beginning faithful souls have constituted the church on earth <coughs> sorry in every age the lord has has had his watchmen from the beginning faithful souls have constituted the church on earth in every age the lord has had his watchmen who have borne a faithful testimony to the generation in which they live this sentence gave the message of a warning and when they were called to lay off their armor others took up the work god brought this witness into covenant relation with them himself uniting the church on earth with the church in heaven he has sent forth his angels to minister to his church and the gates of hell have not been able to prevail against his people and i'm saying that the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail upon the church of god uh, here on earth because it is the church united with the one in heaven and so when they advance it means more than just going to the church on the sabbath and uh, while christ was sending out his disciples when you look at the book of matthew chapter 10 verses 16 to 25 i like to put it on the screen so that we may be able to be benefited together we are told that um, behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves remember the topic is what is seventh day adventism christ says behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the gentiles but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in that hour what you shall speak for it is not ye that speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you and the brother and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall arise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved 23 but when they persecute you in this city flee into another for verily i say unto you you shall not have gone over the cities of israel till the son of man be come the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord if they have called thee the master of the house bill zebub how much more shall they call them of his household seventh day adventism what does it mean to be a seventh day adventist 
These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of synagogues. Here the time cometh what that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. And so the cranks of the matter with the Adventism is having a relationship with the Father and the Son and knowing Him because this is eternal life. This is what we are told that. Uh, uh, this is eternal life, John 17, 3, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou have sent. And when we will reach that standard, that we will not just have a theoretical knowledge of who God and His Son is, but a practical aspect of that knowledge, then we shall be hated of all nations. And uh, this is what the Seventh day Advent is, is called out of. Reading on, <clears throat> we are told, I was shown the necessity of those who believe that we are having the last message of mercy, being separate from those who are daily imbibing new errors. I saw that neither young nor old should attend their meetings, for it is wrong to thus encourage them while they teach error that is deadly poison to the soul and teach for doctrines the commandments of men. The influence of such a gathering is not good. If God has delivered us from a, such a darkness and error, we should stand fast in the liberty wherewith he has set us free and rejoice in the truth. God is displeased with us when we go to listen to error without being obliged to go. For unless he sends us to those meetings when error is forced home to the people by the power of the will, he will not keep us. The angels seize their watchful care over us and we are left to the buffeting of the enemy to be darkened and weakened by him and the power of his evil angels and the light around us becomes contaminated with um, uh darkness seventh day adventists have been called from the darkness of this world and they have been quarried from the churches and this world with the mighty cleave of truth the three angels messages that has to separate them from the world and nothing has to preoccupy their time while they are still on this church our purpose is to be habitus or uh, oracles have been entrusted unto us that have to be promulgated to the whole earth and nothing should come between us and our Christ and so we have a message of life and death unto the world to warn the world of the impending uh, of the impending crisis that is before us and the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Just as uh, John was entrusted with this, was uh, filled with the spirit of uh, Elijah, and he was the voice in the wilderness to prepare a people for the first coming of Jesus Christ. So, Seventh day Adventists, as we have read from Genesis 1, Genesis chapter 2, 1 and 2, they have to finish up the work, they have to prepare a people to meet their Christ. But in order for us to do that, we have, must come out of the lukewarmness that actually permeates Christendom. And uh, in, in this question that we are asking, who is a Seventh-day Adventist? I, I, I like us to look at the book of Romans chapter 2, verses 25 to 29. Romans chapter 2, verses 25 to 29. We are looking at the presentation, who is a Seventh-day Adventist? What is seventh day adventism i mean this is the latter end series this is number 17 in the series it has 21 so we are just about to finish it what is seventh day adventism romans chapter 2 verses 25 to 29 this is what we read for circumcision verily profited if thou wilt keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. 29. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. 
the problem that uh, the ancient seventh day adventist had was the outward resemblance of christianity but that outward resemblance of christianity made them crucify our lord jesus christ on the cross brothers and sisters it is not just the outward uh, profession of the truth that makes us seventh day adventist it is the inward the indwelling power of the holy spirit that makes us to be identified with the church of god it is what makes us to be seventh day adventist and so we found that the last church to which john was bidden to send a message was laodicea the message to sardis and to philadelphia separately cover a period extending to the second coming of jesus christ but in addition to the experience that is portrayed in the fifth and sixth messages that which is directed to laodicea is applicable uh, uh, to us and then you find these conditions in the church of sardis and philadelphia that um, they are the conditions that go uh, until the second coming of jesus christ but the last message is directed to the church of laodicea which is the church under that judgment and seventh day adventism as it lives today it is under laodicea if actually it has the characteristics of lukewarmness it has the characteristics of increased in goods rich and in want of nothing but we find that this character of laudationism is having christ outside the church and not inside the church but you find a commendation for the church of sardis and philadelphia and even the church of philadelphia is the one that is translated to heaven we are going to see that in a while and so seventh day adventism means more than just being a laudation a church under judgment but I, I, as we have read a jew is the one who is a jew inside it means that having a philadelphian condition a, a, a condition that actually your name remains in the book of life uh, I, i'll come in that in a short while so christ says that uh, uh he sets before a door and so we know that um Christ entered into the most holy place at the end of the 2300 days termination in 1844 and he opened that door into the most holy place where actually for you to be a true seventh day adventist you have to enter into that door and by faith remain in the most holy place because you enter there and then your faith is hung there and uh, you don't go backward but you remain in the most holy place with the faith that is there until the second coming of Jesus Christ so anyone who doesn't have the condition of the church that entered into the most holy place now this is where the crux of the matter is brothers and sisters because let us, let us try and reason for uh, uh, a minute in these things let us let us come together and reason about what we are talking about at the end of uh, the 2300 days a door was opened a door into the most holy place the church that entered into the most holy place was the philadelphian church and this is the church that was accepted to enter into that place and then when they drifted into a lukewarmness they entered into the laudation state so as the church was accepted to enter into the most holy place it must remain in that condition to remain a true seventh day adventist church without such a condition the church will only find itself in laudation condition and then what it will never be get sealed and it will never get to heaven continued on but, uh, 18 mr 28.1 18 mr 28.1 we are told revelation 14 1 to 5 quoted this is about the 144 standing on mount zion with jesus christ and having the father's name in their forehead this scripture represents the character of the people that is of revelation 14 1 to 5 the people of god for these last days so the church of god in the last days it is character it's what is mentioned in revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5 the everlasting gospel is to be preached and it is to be practiced in true missionary work carried forward not after the wisdom that men may devise but after the wisdom of god all who walk in safe paths are to understand that the third angel's message is of consequence to the whole world and must be carried to the world in clear straight lines and in it distinctive features as christ revealed it to john i i, I want to speak about revelation chapter 14 1 to 5 in uh somehow and uh show out something let us go to the 
church that enters into the most holy place. That is in the book of Revelation chapter 3. The book of Revelation chapter 3. Now I'm going fast. Try to slow. I want to see the message to the church of Laodicea. Starting from verse 3. Chapter 3 verses uh, 8. Going downward to verses 12. I want you to see this message to the church of Philadelphia. We are looking at what is Seventh Day Adventism. The book of Revelation chapter 3 verses 8. We are told that uh, I know thy works and I have set a door before you. In fact, the message starts in uh, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied me. So, the Philadelphian church has kept the word of God, and has not denied his name. Continue comprehending these things. Behold, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. So the people, there are people who are saying that they are Jews or they are Seventh-day Adventists, but they are not. Only the people who constitute Seventh-day Adventism are the people who have kept the word of God and has not denied him. But the people of the synagogue of Satan, they claim to be Jews, they claim to be Seventh-day Adventists, but they are not. And behold, I'll make them to come and worship thy before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So the church that is loved and the church that is going to translation is the church of Philadelphia. Those who are of the synagogue of Satan, they have not kept his word and have have denied his name. But Philadelphians, which are true Seventh-day Adventists, who are the true Jews, according to Romans chapter 2, actually, they will go and enter into the gates. And so verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Do you know where these things are found? Revelation chapter 14, here is the patience of the saints. Let us go there very quickly before we come back. Revelation 14 verse 12. Here, because we are talking about what is Seventh day Adventism and about the last people on the face of the earth, those who shall see the face of the Lord. It says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So here is the patience of the saints. Now, Revelation chapter 14 is all about the three angels' messages and it starts with the 144 being sealed and then there is no guile in their mouth. And so the Lord writing to the church of Philadelphia says, Thou hast kept the word of my patience. Revelation 14, 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. So you find that the category in Revelation chapter 14 is the same category that is being spoken of in Revelation chapter 3. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which is this hour of temptation that is coming, the time of the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, and the time of tribulation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the features of the Philadelphian church in the book of Revelation chapter 3, it is what is found in the book of Revelation chapter 14. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And so when the church entered into the most holy place in 1844, the Philadelphian church, behold, Christ could have come quickly, but the church entered into Laodicean condition. And now the Lord tells them, because you have entered into the most holy place, continue remaining in me and I in you, and never drift away and I'll keep you. Have the patience of the saint. Do not deny my name. And if you do not deny my name, this is what will happen. Him that overcometh, I'll make a pillar into my 
into the temple of God? Listen carefully. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Pause for a minute. Revelation chapter 14 says 1. Revelation 14. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him an 144,000 having the father's name written in their forehead. Wait. Revelation chapter 3 it says, him that overcometh I'll make appeal in the temple of God and he shall go no more out and I'll write upon him the name of my God. Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 having his father's name in their forehead. So we find that the Philadelphian church is the church of overcomers, the church of 144, which have the father's name written in their forehead. And let me just backtrack. Revelation chapter 3 again. It says, and he shall go no more out. Now, where do you find that? Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 verses uh, 15. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Now, when you read Revelation chapter 7, it is the ceiling of the 144. And in Revelation chapter 3, it talks about, look here, he shall go no more out. Revelation chapter 7, verses 15, he serve him day and night in the temple. So, you can start seeing the glimpse of what it means to be a Seventh-day Adventist. What is Seventh-day Adventism? Let us go back to the Philadelphian church. So, he will go no more out. I'll write upon him the name of my God, Revelation 14.1, the name of the city of my God, which is a new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. So, this is the church. This is Seventh-day Adventist church that is going through, not Laodicean church, because the Laodicean church, the Lord, is outside. So, brothers and sisters, to be seventh, what it means really to be a Seventh-day Adventist is to have the character of the 144, as it is portrayed in Revelation 14 and Revelation chapter 7. Now, we, we, we never hear this being taught among us as a people that this is the condition we must have so as to be sealed, so as to be counted as Seventh day Adventist. There's a lot of glossing, there's a lot of uh, hiding the truth from it is members. The, the peculiarity of our faith and the standard that we have to reach actually, people do not address it. We are concerned with the things that doesn't give us life. We are told that uh, as the storm approaches a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, the seventh day Adventists, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoice in the truth employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. They become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. When Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to under to their faith, for their faith, these apostates are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them, and by false reports and insinuations to stir up the rulers against them. And so, uh, going to John chapter 16, John 16, verses 1 and 2, uh, we are told that, um, let us read together. These things have I spoken unto you that you shall not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue via the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. 
And then we are told that uh, as the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth are abandoned. And when Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates, apostates are the most efficient agents of Satan. So to be a Seventh day Adventist, it means to coming to the saving truth of the grace of Christ and knowing the Father and the Son and being sealed in the forehead with the Father's name. It means that we come to a position we have uh, we have to be in a Philadelphian condition to be uh, numbered amongst uh, the Seventh day Adventists. And so, although the Laodicean church is the church under judgment, if it doesn't receive the truth as it was given to those who entered into the most holy place and continue on that foundation, then they will be building on the sand and when the tempest of the storm comes, it will sweep the whole structure away. And so we are admonished. For the church that entered into the most holy place had the truth that was foundational for them to be in the most holy place. And we are told in manuscript 129.905, we can now, we cannot now step off the foundation that God has established. We cannot now enter into a, any new organization, for this would mean apostasy from the truth. So anyone who comes to build on another foundation, which is not the one which was led, laid by Christ himself then brothers and sisters they will be not they will not be part of the seventh day adventism but they will be an, a new organization so anyone who doesn't hold to the fundamental beliefs that were given to the people when they entered into the most holy place and remain in that truth cannot be counted as a seventh day adventist what is the end of the Laodicean church? Because we hear that the Laodicean church is the last church and it is going through. Brothers, this is a, sto a sorry statement that people make on the pulpit, that the Laodicean church is the la last church. Yes, and in quotes, is the last church. But it's not the last church. That is not the condition of the church that is going to be translated. The condition of the church that is going to be translated, it is the Philadelphian state. And so... When we hear people say that the ship is going through and they mention that the Laodicean is the last church and is going through far from the truth. Let us hear what we are told about the Philadelphian, the Laodicean church. What is it is end? The state of the church represented by the foolish virgins is also spoken of as the Laodicean state. Review and Herald, August 19, 1890. If the church of God becomes lukewarm, it does not stand in favor with God any more than do the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, where is the prophet quoting what she is saying? Let us look at this message very carefully. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 18 one to four and after these things i saw another angel came down from heaven having a great power and earth and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong sorry i didn't screen this this is it and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now pause for a minute. Let us go here again. The state of the church represented by the foolish virgins is also spoken of the Laodicean state. Now listen carefully. I'll go back and forth in these statements. It says that Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitations of devils and a hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Back to the quote. He says, if the church of God becomes lukewarm, if the church of God becomes laudition, as simple as that, 
it does not stand in favor with God any more than do the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, this language is referred to Babylon. And we are being told that if the church becomes lukewarm, it does stand in the same category with these churches that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 18, verses 2. Not only that, but also it becomes the state of the foolish virgins. So, we, we, we can all the day try to say whatever we say but uh, the prophet of the lord doesn't lie unless we don't believe in the prophet believe ye in the lord and you will uh, be established believe ye in the prophets and then you shall be able to prosper second chronicles 2020 and so seventh day adventism is not laudationism it cannot be laudationism is lukewarmness, lukewarmness it is foolish virgins and it is part of babylon when actually it becomes in that condition brothers and sisters look again if the church of god becomes lukewarm it does not stand in favor with god any more than do the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the habitation of devils just the way the lord views the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the habitation of devils and the whole of every evil spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, that is the same way he views lukewarmness and foolish virgins. I know some stones will be thrown at me, but let us continue. This is the truth of the matter. Now, thus, the message of Laodicean again represent. We are told that uh, the message to the Laodicean is applicable to Seventh-day Adventists who have great light and have not walked in the light. Now, do they stand in favor with God? Let us reason together. The church of God becomes lukewarm. It does not stand in favor with God any more than do the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are looking at uh, what is Seventh-day Adventism. It is not Laodiceanism. This is not the condition that the church that is going to be translated looks like. If anyone have ever told you that this is Laodiceanism is the ship that is going through, then you need to revisit these things with the brethren who have shown you this. And the prophet asked the church, will they remain in such a condition? Such a condition, Christ is outside knock, knocking. And we must cleanse the soul temple. We must cleanse the camp. There's a lot of licentiousness. There's a lawful intimacy and unholy practices among us as a people, both in the clergy and in the laity. Ministers who are handling sacred things, ministers who are, have been put in stand to be like bearers, and even the people who have been called forth to call out people from Laodiceanism. We are told that we are in danger of becoming a sister to fallen Babylon. When we allow our churches to become corrupted and be filled with every foul spirit, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird, we do not stand in the presence of God in a good way. And that is why we are told that actually, right now, the Lord is not in her presence. And that is why we are not experiencing a revival and reformation. It doesn't matter how many meetings that we shall hold, praying. And I, I, I thank the Lord that prayer works. And I don't uh, uh, despise the 100 days that have been put outside there to pray. Those are many days. That is three good months in 10 days, 100 days for prayers. It's not a, such a small period. But shall we only go on our knees and never have a revival and reformation? Shall we just kneel down like Joshua knelt down while there was seen in the camp, Achan had taken of the things which were accursed? The Lord told Joshua, stand on your knees and go back to the camp and rectify what is wrong. Prayers are good but they are as good 
when a reformation is taken upon and the things which are bad are actually done away and the things which are good are taken up and so we are told that uh, uh, it was by departure from the Lord and alliance with the heathen that the Jewish church became a hallowed and Rome corrupting herself in likewise manner by seeking the support of worldly powers receives a like condemnation the same condemnation that Rome receives the same condemnation the Jewish church the ancient seventh day adventist church received and it is the same condemnation that actually the modern seventh day adventist will be will receive and they'll be counted out of the kingdom this is it we have come to a point where actual truth is not entertained as truth but fables are more taught than actually what should be taught desire of ages 36.2 Desire of Ages 36.2. It says, The people whom God had called to be the pillar or, and ground of truth had become representatives of Satan. Who are these people? The ancient Seventh day Adventists. They were doing the work that he desired them to do. They were doing the work that he desired them to do. The work which who desired them to do? Satan. Taking a course of to misrepresent the character of God and cause the world to look upon him as a tyrant. The very priest who ministered in the temple had lost sight of the significance of the service they performed. They had ceased to look beyond the symbol to the thing signified. In presenting the sacrificial offering, they were as actors in the play. The ordinances which God himself had appointed were made the means of blinding the mind and hardening the heart. God could do no more for man through these channels. Brothers and sisters, the whole system must be swept away. The whole Jewish system. What shall happen to the seventh day of the day? The enemy of souls have sought to bring in supposition that a great reformation was to take place among Seventh Day Adventists, and that it, this reform and that this reformation will consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith. Remember the church that had pillars; it was not Laodicea. The church that had pillars was the Philadelphian church. If you don't believe, I'll just take you back to it. The church that had the pillar. Look at Revelation chapter 3 again. Which church had the pillars? Behold, Revelation chapter 3. And to the end of the church in law in Philadelphia, as these things have said the he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it, and shut it and no man openeth. Going downward, that uh, he that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of God. So the church that had the pillar is Philadelphian church. And now we are told that um, the enemy of souls have uh, sought to actually downplay these pillars. And were this reformation to take place, what will result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church will be discarded. Our religion will be changed. The fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years will be counted as error. A new organization will be established. So what we are seeing is a new organization and not Seventh-day Adventism. The founders of this system will go into the cities and do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, will be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. The leaders will teach that virtue is better than vice. But God being removed, they will place their dependence on human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation will be built on the sand, and the storm and tempest will sweep away the structure. Again, backward, God could do no more for man through these channels. The whole system must be swept away, away, and the tempest of the storm must sweep away this structure so that the true Seventh day Adventism may remain standing on the pillars of Philadelphian condition. I don't know if you are listening. When we give up the foundation that the Lord has given unto us, we do not become his church. I, I want you to see this as we draw to an end. When Christ cried out, it is finished. The holy water that was unseen guest to Belshazzar's feast pronounced the Jewish nation to be a nation unchurched. The same hand that traced on the wall the characters that recorded Belshazzar's doom and the end of Babylonian kingdom rent the veil of the temple from top to bottom, opening a new and living way for all high and low, rich and poor, 
Jew and Gentile. From henceforth, people might come to God without a priest or a ruler. 5 BC 1109. They cried out for the crucifixion of Christ and as representative of the Jewish nation, placed themselves under the Roman jurisdiction, which they despised by saying, We have no king but Caesar. When they said this, they uncharged themselves. They ceased to be the Seventh day Adventist church. The unchurching happened when the church fornicated with the kings of the earth, as we have learned, uh, as you see above. When she united with the state, she fell, and as an organization was the body of Christ no longer. The call to come out of her, my people, was made, and approximately 50 days later, we have this recorded in Acts. The same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Those who continued in the truth, those who saw the Messiah as their king, remained church, the church of God. But those who crucified Christ became unchurched at that point. And so, who are these people? God said that, uh, I, I want you to see something, brothers and sisters. We are talking about what does it mean to be Seventh-day Adventist? What is Seventh-day Adventism? So, Look at uh, this church of Philadelphia again. Verses 9. This is what I want you to see. Verses 9. I'll highlight it first before I give it unto you. We are living in the most solemn time and we must understand our calling and who we are as a people. It is not time to slumber. It is not a time to be confused of what is Seventh-day Adventism. Now, I want you to see this. Verse 9. Behold, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jewish or Seventh-day Adventists, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I'll make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know what I have that I have loved thee. So, who are these people who are of the synagogue of Satan? who call themselves Jews, Seventh-day Adventists, but they will come to worship under the people in a Philadelphian condition. Brothers, don't be shocked. Here it is. Word to the Little Flock, page 12, paragraph 2. You think that one, you think that those who worship before the saints' feet, Revelation 3, 9, will at last be saved? Here I must differ with you. For God show me that this class were professed Adventists, who had fallen away and crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And in the hour of temptation, which is yet to come, to show out everyone's true character, they will know that they are forever lost and overwhelmed with anguish of spirit. They will bow at the saint's feet. Now, let us talk about professed Seventh-day Adventists who have fallen away. We know that the church that entered into the Most Holy Place in 1844 were the Philadelphian church that had the pillars of the church had the name of the father written in their forehead and actually they do not go outside the temple of God but they serve him there day and night. But the Laodiceans are the people who have fallen away from the Philadelphian state and have become lukewarm. Laodicean is from Philadelphia. And so this is not an upward step, but a falling away, a drawing back and a backsliding. And so these are the people we are calling the synagogue of Satan in Revelation 3.9. And they are they that will worship at the saints' feet. Profess Seventh-day Adventists who have fallen away and crucified the Son of God afresh. They are the one who will not be kept at the hour of the temptation. But the true Seventh-day Adventist remains in the Philadelphian condition and goes through. The question is, in which condition are you then? Brothers and sisters, this is a question that every one of us should ask themselves. What am I and how am I standing in the sight of the Lord? The work is almost brothers and sisters do we reflect the lovely image of Jesus Christ or do we look just like worldlings are we professed in our faith this time that is remaining the Lord is calling his church 
wake up to see how they have fallen and go back to the true condition of Philadelphia. Have not yet reached. Have you reached? And if this is the state that we have in, then this is the time. We don't have enough time. And so, what is the Lord telling us? Let us look at what the Lord says then. Let us escape from Babylon. How do we escape from Babylon? A complete separation. The command found in Revelation 18 for come out of how my people means to come out of those institutions which will place in the minds of our young people principles which are up to make them join the class of worshippers of which we read in 2 Timothy 3 5 having a form of goldness but denying the power thereof. As faithful watchmen, we should be just as desirous of getting our children out of popular schools as we are to call the older people out of popular churches. The popular churches are only a product of world education. So to get at the root of the matter, not the branches, we must separate ourselves from that which creates the condition in which all the religious world at present finds itself. We must come out of the system of education they have. We must come out of church and ship that many churches are having, and it is a result of a, a false education that they are having. Seventh day Adventism means that coming out of every institution that the world finds itself in and going back to the principles of true education, true religion, fundamental principles that were given to the Philadelphian church when it entered the most holy place. Nothing should be to come between us and our God. And so these are our pillars as we close. The pillars that makes us to be part of Seventh day Adventism, the law that is in the Sabbath, the faith of Jesus Christ, the personality of God and Christ, the sanctuary, the non immortality of soul, the three angels' messages, the testimony of Jesus Christ. When you look at all this, most of them are now not in existence. What shall we do in this time as those who want to remain to Seventh day Adventist? What shall we do? I'll read verses in closing. I'll start with Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, as we close. Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. This is my appeal as we pray. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thou have left brotherly love. Thou have left Philadelphian condition. Thou have become laudition. Thou have become lukewarm. Thou have become a foolish virgin. Remember therefore from when thou art fallen and repent and do the first works when you entered into the most holy place as a, a Philadelphia or else I'll come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. The last verse, Psalms 11 verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Brothers and sisters, there are so many things I can speak about, but suffice what I have spoken in a few minutes that have passed. Let us see when the earth we have fallen from Philadelphian condition, from the pillars of our faith that we have talked about. Let us see if we are in a Philadelphian condition, if we are in Laodicean condition. There are the steps, the pillars of our faith, the pillars of the Philadelphian church. You will look at them. You will post the video at your own time. Look at them and ask the Lord, am I in the right path? And if you are not in the right path, we are asked, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And the Bible does not leave us to guess what we shall do. Last verse, Malachi 3. Malachi Malachi chapter 
लखाई चप नगरी अधिक लो लखाई चप नगरी वर्सेस सिक्सटीन मालकाई थ्री सिक्सटीन if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do they that fear the lord speak one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name it is a time to go back and reexamine ourselves if we are in faith or if we are reprobates may the lord guide us and may the, go, the, the good Lord give us strength that we may see when forth we have fallen and come back to the fall and enjoy the refreshing from the Lord and be able to sound the loud cry. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you so much for this time. Help us what it means to be a Seventh day Adventist. And help us not have just this knowledge, but turn it into a practical knowledge that we may walk in thy ways. Thank you so much for the Sabbath that has grown nigh. As we think about thee, as Malachi says, let us go back to the foundations. And be numbered amongst those who shall have the Father's name on their foreheads. Speak to us in thy tenderest voice. And Father, help us to reach unto others who have not heard this truth. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow we shall be looking at the ten virgins. It will be just a continuation of what is Seventh Day Adventism. And so I pray that the Lord will bless us and He will uh, continue teaching us His ways and even give us strength to walk in His way. The Lord bless us.